My 2011 VW Touareg has developed another issue. Is it time to sell or should I keep it? Stay tuned to find out. If you guys aren't familiar with this car, this is a 2011 VW Touareg TDI and it is my wife's daily driver. I drive it sometimes too, but it does not see a lot of love on the channel because 95% of the time it drives great. There's nothing wrong. It is a great vehicle. However, I did run into an issue that at first I thought was something very minor, which I didn't do much filming of. Uh, we were on our way to my in-laws, which is a three hour road trip and everything was fine. And all of a sudden I had a overheating warning come up on the dash and I looked at the temperature gauge and it was fully pegged. So at that point, the car does go into limp mode, which means I don't have Pretty, I, I think I have like 10% throttle. Even if you floor it, it's only 10%. Just gives you the slightest acceleration. Pretty much tells you to move over and park or, or stop the vehicle. So I ended up pulling over onto the median and within, let's say five seconds, it went from being fully pegged to back to 90 degrees, which was right in the middle, normal operating temp temperature. So I thought, huh, okay, maybe that's just a weird hiccup. Let's keep driving. Sure enough, half an hour later, same thing happens. What was my mind? It goes from 90, bam, all the way to 130, flashes the light again, at which point I don't even pull, as I'm pulling over, it goes back to 90. So, all right, I'm thinking to myself, again, maybe this is an electrical issue. It doesn't seem like the car is overheating. It wouldn't be able to go from a normal operating temperature all the way like that through a you know normal cooling system, unless there's an air pocket, maybe. So. Uh, I call the VW dealership, they tell me, oh, we've heard of this before. It is the coolant temperature sensor, which is located in the lower rat hose, easy fix. I grab that, replace it at my in-laws, go for a drive, and within 20 minutes, it does it again. This time though, it doesn't go full uh, hot, it kind of like wanders, it goes like 110, and then it goes back. So I was like, oh, okay, this is starting to get pretty interesting and weird. Sure enough, um, after that, I end up driving the car home thinking, okay, it's not a huge deal. And it does happen once again, and again, and again. It probably happened about four or five times while I was driving. And you could see that it was not pegging. And what I found at that point was that if I downshifted and added more RPM or throttle, it would go from you know being almost full warm to about right in the middle, or sorry, right in between normal operating temperature and overheating, and then kind of hover back and forth, and then it would go back to normal. So I was like, okay, this is just so weird. Nevertheless, I get it back to the shop, and I figure out that there is another sensor that needs to be replaced, and that is the main engine temperature sensor, which is located underneath the turbo. Huge PETA to get to, that job was not fun. And within 20 minutes of driving it, once again, it overheats. At which point, I'm baffled, and I'm still thinking this is an electric gremlin, not that there's something actually wrong with the cooling system, because it just like, it wanders and it, and it spikes. So I thought, oh, man, could it be a air pocket? But thinking to myself, like, how would that air pocket get in there? The coolant, there's no coolant leaking or anything like that, so, it seems like everything is okay mechanically. At this point, I figure I don't got the time. I take it to Rob at Auto Evolution, who's been my go-to with these cars. And I shot some footage there, so let's cut to that. So I am back here at Auto Evolution, and Rob here has been working on this thing for what, the better part of a month, right? Yep, it's been about that long. And you've, you fixed it, thankfully. It's finally fixed. But my goodness, it's been like the, to me, one of the craziest ordeals that I've heard for what seems to be such a simple problem where the truck I originally thought wasn't overheating, but it was, but you think now that you figured it all out, why don't you just explain to me how this whole thing went? All right, well, first we tried to check the cooling system to see what was happening. We saw the, the lower rad hose was cold. The first things you check, see how the operation of the thermostat is, everything was, looking a little suspicious. Lower rad hose always stayed cold, the upper rad hose stayed hot. First thing you do is go to a thermostat and look at that. So we, we took apart the thermostat. The th first thing we found was 
the thermostat spring was actually broken. There's a plastic retainer on the side that holds a secondary spring and that spring, that, that side piece that holds that spring on was actually broken. Uh, so right off the bat, we say, okay, the thermostat's bad. We go to replace the thermostat, put that back in, bleed the system, and we're still getting overheating issues. <laughs> So that, that's, that's all common stuff. Right away when you see a broken thermostat, you should see that that should be, fix your problem, but it didn't in this case. So we check all the temperatures of all the other hoses. We went through the cooling system. We found that the EGR cooler thermostat, the lower rad hose on that was cold. The upper one was hot. So we say, okay, well, it's obviously not circulating coolant properly. That for some reason, they bolted it directly to the top of the thermostat housing. So we replaced the EGR cooler thermostat, bled the system again, ran the car, and the cooling system was working perfectly. Everything was functioning, everything was flowing, but for some reason, that still didn't fix the problem. Oh my goodness. The car had still random gauge fluctuations. The temperature would go all the way to hot, cold, max. And at uh, that point, was it physically overheating? It, was, it wasn't, right? No, it was definitely a gauge reading a voltage issue between the computer and the system and telling the voltages were not converting properly. Uh, we had sporadic readings all over the place and we had to go further into this problem. But with seeing mechanical issues like the thermostat not working or the thermostat physically broken, the auxiliary thermostat not working, like these are all common issues that these cars have and you fix it all and it should rectify overheating issues. Um, and, it, and it didn't, there was still more to the story on this. So then we found connectors, we had to start checking wires. We found connectors that had holes in the wiring, pinholes from previous diagnosis, where guys, you know, probe it. I don't recommend that. Don't probe wires with, with pins or needles or anything. It exposes stuff and then you have future problems later on. Nobody realizes the damage you cause when you start poking and prodding wires and leaving it all exposed and not covering it up after you're done. So you really gotta back probe those sensors, back probe the wires, do everything properly so that you don't have issues two or three or six months down the road. So after that, we found that there was a connector that had that issue. Uh, we wiggle the connector, the voltages would change completely on the live data. Which connector was that? That was a coolant temp sensor for the engine on the back of this car because this car doesn't have one coolant temp sensor. It actually has two that the computer has to rectify where it needs to be and open and close the thermostat. Um, so we check the connector. We w wiggle it all around. It's actually behind the turbo. Um, it, they put the coolant temp sensor right beside the turbo on the passenger side cylinder head. Yeah, very hard to get because I did replace that originally before I brought this to you. So yeah, I, kn I know all about it. So, yeah, that's a pretty fun job. So they, so we, we've done that. We wiggle the connector around and the voltage would fluctuate all over the place. So we said at that point, wow, we got it licked. This thing, the voltage is fluctuating. The computer can't convert it. It's all over the place. We're going to replace that connector. We're going to stabilize everything. It's going to be great. We replace the connector. We wiggle it around. The voltage is completely stabilized. We got good readings, drive the car another two and a half, three hours. And again, it starts overheating. Well, the gauge says it's overheating. So oh, we man. Go start going through all the Volkswagen test plans. We start from A to Z again. We got to go back over the whole car. We know the cooling system's perfect. We know the wiring's great. We have to now fault trace this back to the ECM. Sure enough, we pulled out the ECM complete. We took it apart. We found that there was cold solder joints that were actually dislodged on the ECM control board. And we re-soldered all the joints, redid the whole board and now put it back in, test the system, drove it another three and a half, four hours, and the system is now perfect, everything works. Well, thank you once again. You've come to the rescue and fixed this thing for me. I, I, at first I was really, really worried because you know, it was above my pay grade and I guess with these types of vehicles, you know, for the average do-it-yourselfer, I think the recommendation is bring it to a professional such as yourself because you would be able to fix this. I think even at a dealership, they would have a hard time because you, uh, you know, we were communicating back and forth and you went above and beyond, drove this thing constantly because this was an intermittent problem. It wasn't like this was happening right away. So I certainly appreciate you putting in the time and effort and, and getting this thing sorted out for me. So it is now back to being a working, running vehicle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, a bit of a challenge. It's been a good challenge for us, but it's, uh, we're happy to finally see it go out the door and everything's good. You guys will be happy. With right it. on, thanks man. Talk about crazy. You know, when uh, I, I think about working on cars and whatnot, 
it doesn't dawn on me sometimes the amount of time and effort it takes to fix something and I gotta give a big shout out to Rob. Thank you for all the hard work and effort that he put into this thing. He certainly went above and beyond to, to get this job done. Uh, it certainly wasn't cheap. At the end of the day, it was 1500 bucks Canadian, so around $1,200 US to, to do that. But um, what Rob forgot to mention was that he believes this all stemmed from this uh, bleed screw up here in the coolant pipe. And when the, he went to test pressure test the coolant system, he found that there was a bit of a leak coming out of this, which would make sense. And that's why it drew the air in originally and caused this whole mess. Uh, he also thinks that when I drove the car home, every time it would cause that overheating issue, the air pocket was getting up into an area where the, the temperature sensor was obviously, but when it wasn't there, it could have been in the thermostat area, which was causing uh, deformation in the plastic or whatever, causing it to fail essentially, because as he mentioned, he had to replace that. So what an epic saga. And so begs the question, Dave, mm. where to from now? Man, you've it, had a bit of a journey with this thing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, I, I've owned it less than two years and uh, the steering wheel lock thing was inconvenient. And expensive. Yeah. Well, it just depends what your definition of expensive I is because so. I feel like if you own a German vehicle, yeah. anytime it goes to the mechanic, it usually is about a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, just right? to open the so, hood, yeah. Um, and truth be told, like I, I still love the way this vehicle drives and has all the creature comforts. Like oh, no it's, doubt. it's I think one of the best SUVs on the market. Yeah. So it would be hard to say goodbye to it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certainly those pros, but the flip side is, and now that you fix all these problems, it's good to go forever now. It could right? be. You, that's the thing. You, you just, just never, never know. Yeah, you're you just never know. The this dice. is. It's kind of like a high uh, stakes game of, of blackjack. Where, you know, yeah, yeah, where you're just yeah, yeah. like rolling the dice here, thinking, well, am I going to be good or yeah. not? And the, the one downside to what everything happened was it kind of shook my confidence in the vehicle. A For little sure, bit. It and would. that's what I, I don't love they were both really weird things to have fail they were and rob said that he's like you know what the the things that have happened to this car have been both very very odd yeah usually you you i've never seen you know a car come in with, with these two problems and the the way this went down with the the mm -hmm. overheating issue you know and like all the extra little fixes that had yeah. done. he's like it's just puzzling so you know that isn't great um doesn't so, make you wonder like is it a lemon like how how many more things can go wrong but it does seem to happen where when a car has weird things go wrong, it just seems to continue a lot. Yeah, so you, I know what you mean by feeling shook by it. It's, exactly. it's unnerving to think. Yeah, uh, it's it's a tough call where where to go. And your whether wife I, drives it. Yeah, whether I should sell. That's and, my one big gripe is know. like if I have to drive this far and you know I run into an issue and it does disable the car with my family. That's what yeah, you that know, would suck really so sucks. Bad. And the other side is. I really like to work on my own vehicles, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and, and especially for the channel, like we sure. want to create content. And sure. when you got to send the car out like that, yeah. it doesn't do <laughs> us any good. Well, plus it's emasculating. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, I know. Somebody else has got to work on my vehicle. How dare you touch my vehicle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, there, there's certainly a lot to think about. I'm not saying I'm going to sell the car right away. Sell I may, it, Peter, sell I, it. I may reconsider it. And you know, as I've mentioned in the past, there's two camps. There are the people that think these cars are complete lemons, like you mentioned. Yes, I'm and, in that camp, everyone. And there are people that think these cars are the best. Yeah, our buddy Dimitri, for example. Yes, who, yeah. Who we can basically blame for this bad ownership That's experience. Right. That's it's right. all your fault, Dimitri. <laughs> I, I I still love it. I think it's a great vehicle. It does drive awesome. It, from a driving perspective, I don't think there's anything out there from a towing perspective. There's mm -hmm. nothing out there on the market that you can go out and buy. I think these are like $10,000 now. Yeah, so but it's, maybe there's it's, a reason they're so cheap. Yeah, either. I mean like, yes, yes. Did every you get German, what you paid for, everyone? And every German vehicle is, <laughs> A maintenance hog. Let's just face yes, it. Yes, I'm just sense, gloating so. here because yeah, you know, I'm a Toyota guy. I'm a Honda guy. I like my simple, reliable Japanese cars. Fair enough, and there is beauty to that. So I think that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think and what I should do. Whether I should sell the the Touareg or should I keep it? And I guess 
there may be another video on this or there may be one on a new truck. So stay tuned for that. Thank you as always for watching. Before we end this one off, I wanted to give you guys an update. It has actually been over eight months since this video has been shot and I did end up selling the VW Touareg. Uh, it just came down to the fact that I could not trust it on long road trips and my wife drives it. The thought of it breaking down with my little two-year-old daughter in there, just, I, I could not stomach that. That's it, the car is gone regrettably, but I have moved on to something else which you guys will see pretty soon and it is this.